we are conventionally thinking about negating and neutralizing terrorists. So we are looking at individual body counts or human count. What the enemy has started doing, and I'm bringing in SP Vaidya up here, is that they have started removing the bodies away. They have started replacing that with technology, and they are saying we'll continue to keep dropping as much as ammunition and loads, and also along with drugs, and reduce the incidence on on human intervention. Today it is just drops. Tomorrow they will send in swarms of drones, all laced, to go ahead and explode at point of impact. Are we ready for something like that? Because they are changing the dynamics of terror. S. P. Vijay, Mr. Anand, uh, I was listening very carefully. Uh, the places of uh, droppings you mentioned: mm. Kasim Nagar, uh, Sidra Bypass, yes. Golf Course, where in fact I play game almost every day. Mm. Uh, these are interior parts of the city, mm. and these are uh, you know Jammu cities. Uh, not less than 20 km from the international border yeah so uh, then you mentioned banihal kazikund see even srinagar yeah which are roughly uh, even crow fly distance more than um, i would say 75 to 100 km from the border mm. and uh, it is very very serious uh, in fact tomorrow this payload can be dropped uh, at the raj bhavan it mm. can be dropped in the new secretariat It can be dropped on any army uh, uh, hmm. core headquarters. So uh, it is uh, that the what Pakistan is doing today hmm. is very very serious challenge. Uh, it should not be taken very lightly. Uh, in fact, uh, I have been uh, I have grown seeing all this uh, changing from uh, let's say 20 years back when I was DIG Jammu. Hmm. Uh, there used to be. Uh, uh people living on the international border and loc who were helping pakistan they were they were being used as uh, trans border smugglers yeah they used to bring consignment of drugs weapons and uh, then uh, help the terrorists to carry on but we must admit that we have people within us to pick up these uh, droppings correct and a very strong action is needed uh, and very in good intelligence network is needed but what is challenging to the police and security forces is after all where do you look it's not only border mm. today it is as deep as srinagar city where do you look in the whole city where do you look in whole jammu city where do you look in the in jungles and in, in bypass and uh, how many places do you scan correct it is a very very serious challenge let me tell you mr na uh, so uh, initially they were using board uh trans border smugglers hmm. then when i i recall uh, we uh, i was uh, ig jammu that time we uh, all my colleagues senior colleagues we all together made a presentation to government of india how a fencing was required hmm. like you had job situation turning uh, in favor of us and we were able to control uh, terrorism in punjab hmm. so that is why after 2002 this uh, uh, fencing on the loc uh, came up uh, with the help of army and uh, other uh, hmm. uh, now they by using drone they are they are almost breaching your uh, fence yes which is, they are just flying to any place they want and uh, guide the concerned person to pick up consignment i have dropped and so on so place now it is very very serious challenge and i think we must Uh, put our heads together to face this challenge what do you do with a rogue state hmm. like pakistan their people are dying of hunger and look they have put uh, that is why the condition of pakistan today is i keep seeing pakistan channels uh, how their people are admiring our prime minister and economy hmm. that look at where they have taken their nation because their whole energy whole technology is diverted towards bleeding india hmm. No, I know, but the point is the fact is that the rest of the country or rest of Pakistan, even its former prime minister at every rally is actually saying, "Look what India is doing. Look where we are." But what do we do about this entire uh, India obsessed and haunted by the uh, humiliation of 1971 establishment, which just can't get over that humiliation? It all stems from there. It all started when 90,000 yes. of their POWs were went back, and unko kaha gaya chudiya panlo, and they just can't get over that humiliation. the fact that what they thought that they had broken india and got a separate country found itself partitioned within 30 years of 
their existence that itself is a is is still haunts them that's a reality but what they are trying to do is use technology for all the wrong reasons they should be using yeah. these this, uh, this these drones to draw, uh, send emergency supplies and medical relief to their people they should be doing it to irrigate their farms to try and yeah. uh, sprinkle uh, you know use it to uh, man their entire security establishment but drones today have the ability to fly not only 30 40 kilometers 100 kilometers and come back some drones are yeah. designed to fly 700 kilometers so we are doing it with a larger intent of helping humanity these people are wanting to destroy humanity what look what are they and, and monica ji this is exactly what the pakistanis want they want to reduce the cost of human training because they don't know when the humans will turn away they'll drop their guns and run away here they know it's a 40000 rupee 50000 rupee drone even if it does 10 sorties uska kaam nikal gaya some saw some drones have done more than 50 sorties 50 sorties with a payload of 8 to 10 kilos in each trip imagine how much of uh, uh, ammunition drugs guns they have brought into our country already uh, i take that as a question anand ji and i think you know uh, three points i want to make first of all you know the very nature of warfare has changed and use of drones in international conflicts is not uh, anything new in 2020 we saw how between uh, armenia and azerbaijan when a war was going on turkey which is a very good friend of pakistan was helping uh, azerbaijan with a lot of drones Mm -hmm. And in fact, you know, uh, there have been many reports of Pakistan getting drone technology and many sophisticated type of drones from China. And in turn, Pakistan, the ISID, that entire deep state, is supplying these drones to the non-state actors, all the mm -hmm. terror groups, uh, especially the LED. So, uh, I think uh, this has to do with the nature of uh, change in the warfare. But most importantly, you know, uh, you've been, uh, and I congratulate you for all the, you know, detailed investigation and many new facts have come to light. I have been learning consistently thanks to the expert panel and your own investigation. But, you know, uh, most importantly, one aspect that we have ignored so far is the narco terror aspect. Mm. So, drones are not used only to uh, supply ammunition, yeah. but also to give uh, drugs. Money. So, you know, there's a lot of transactions going on. Uh, many drones have been intercepted that have around 12 lakh, 30 lakh, 40 lakh rupees. And then there is also a case of these being used to transfer uh, yes. illegal, you know, drugs into India. So, I think there was a 12 kg uh, something, uh, the, you know. Heroin, uh, heroin. Uh, See, the payload is, payload is, payload is anywhere between, payload is anywhere between 8 to 12 kilograms depending upon the drone that they are using. And I know uh, group captain Vinod, correct me if I am wrong. So, what they do is they'll, they'll latch a gun along with that two bricks of heroin if they don't have grenades and other UGBL, UBGL shells etc or if they don't have sticky bombs. So based on that they will send and otherwise it will be replaced by wads of cash and again along with that one brick of heroin. So this is a mix of the supplies which they do and then they decide which areas where they can shift and, and they are able to send, send these drones. But the pick up and drop the, that is also a critical aspect. And who is working with the Pakistani army? That is the more important part. This Lashkar and Talha side's presence. Let's just break that and I'll just put that out. We've got more details here. This is how it is.